Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to share with you step-by-step -step instructions on how to develop and prepare and complete your assignment for the personal budget project. At first, I would like to state that having a personal budget allows you to achieve many of your life goals, both personally as well as professionally. In this activity and assignment, you will have the opportunity to do just that, create your own personal budget in the spirit of achieving success and your financial goals. We begin by opening Blackboard and when you log in using your username, the CSID number issued to you, and your password, you then go to the dashboard for our course, just like you do the other assignments. When you open the course, on the left margin, click on the Assignments tab, and then scroll to the bottom of the Assignments tab, and you will see the instructions as well as the Excel worksheets for your personal budget project. When you open the Excel worksheets, and they are labeled Personal Budget Worksheets in Excel, you will see four tabs, four worksheets displayed. The one you see before you now in this video is the first worksheet in which you will set a financial goal. Before you begin completing the worksheets, however, I urge you to please be sure you save this file from Blackboard onto your personal computer, that is your own hard drive. Failure to do so risks losing all of the data and information that you have input or will input into the Excel spreadsheet. So step one, make sure you save this file on your hard drive before entering any of the data. As shown here, the first worksheet of the four is setting a financial goal. As shown on the screen, the yellow shaded cells are for your use to enter the values that represent a goal that you wish to achieve. Perhaps it's a short-term goal in the next six months to build an emergency fund, maybe $500 or 1000 Or it's a more long-term goal, maybe two years or three years, to have a down payment for the purchase of a vehicle, or maybe even the down payment for a home. Whatever your goals are, I urge you at this point to think about what those goals will be for you in achieving success. You can enter them in the yellow shaded cells in this worksheet financial goal. As indicated on row three and highlighted, you enter the total dollar amount needed of which you estimate the goal to be. Then, as indicated, there's a default on interest that you likely could earn through a standard savings account today about one-tenth of one percent. You can, uh, you're welcome to adjust that based upon other savings rates or annual percentage yields or return on investments if you so choose. And then, finally, enter the number of months into the future in which you hope to achieve your goal. For one year, that would be 12, two years, 24, etc. And as you'll see on row six, it will automatically calculate how much per month you will need to save in a personal budget in order to attain that goal. Also, you'll note that this financial goal, the monthly goal, uh, and the monthly savings associated with it also is linked into your personal budget that is found on worksheet four, and we'll discuss that in just a moment. So in this worksheet, between now and the first of the month, the first of next month, begin thinking about your goals, what you hope to achieve, and in doing so, please complete worksheet one financial goal. Next, we have the second worksheet labeled as cash flows. And like the first worksheet, all of the information contained in here is entered using the yellow shaded cells. On the left side in column B, you'll see each of the categories of income as cash income to you uh, that you have earned either through wages, perhaps through bonuses or commission, through interest earned, tips, gifts, or other sources of income. Please list those in this column in the yellow shaded cells. You'll note there's also a category on row 15 and 16 that says other. That's for your use as well. If something is not adequately described, feel free to change it. Again, do not enter values in the orange shaded cells because they're formula driven. So you can enter your income for a period of one month. That's the time period. How much per month 
on a monthly basis, do you receive an income? And you would enter that in column B. Next, scroll over to column E. And in column E, you'll see that there are expenses sorted for you in terms of fixed and variable. And again, these represent cash outflows for a one month period that represent your typical expenditure patterns, your living expenses. As indicated, you'll see categories for fixed expenses like rent or a mortgage, taxes, car payments, insurance, as well as payments for student loans and withholdings for taxes. Sources that you can use to get this information could certainly be your checkbook, it could be your pay stub, or other documents that provide the uh, expenditures and are listed for your reference. Then, towards the bottom, you'll also see beginning on row 30, variable expenses. These expenses do change based upon need. Food, utilities, um, uh, electricity, natural gas, telephone, etc. are all examples of variable expenses. For one month, enter the value, what represents a typical month for you. And when you scroll to the bottom, you'll see that it auto calculates for your benefit either a surplus or a deficit that reflects the difference between your income and your expenses. Again, worksheet two, cash flow, should represent a historical, that is a previous month, in a normal spending pattern for you. Again, for worksheet two, I recommend that you complete that worksheet before the first of next month in preparation for your personal budget. Third is the worksheet labeled net worth. What is different with net worth, unlike the cash flow, is that net worth represents your financial position in total. That is the difference between the amount that you own, the value of what you own, and the amount of what you owe based on loans that you have. In other words, the values on this worksheet are not monthly payments. They're not sources of monthly income, but rather the value of the asset, such as a home, a car, clothing, electronics, furniture. Where could you get this information? Well, oftentimes you can find it online. Fair market value information for a variety of products may be found online or you may also use the irs.gov website and based upon uh, the guidelines they provide will assist you with determining the fair market value. For a vehicle, you could determine the fair market value of your, of your vehicle using Kelly Blue Book and kbb.org is an excellent source to reference. So again, with this third worksheet, uh, net worth, you enter the total value of the assets of what you own. And that is entered in total in column C. You'll note on column C, it's broken down into three categories of assets. The first is monetary assets, such as cash, checking, and savings accounts. The second of three categories are the tangible property that you own, like a vehicle, a home, furniture, clothing, computer equipment, and other electronics. Finally, the third category of assets represents investments, if any, that perhaps you have. Investments in mutual funds, a 401k, stocks, bonds, and of course other employer retirement accounts. These are not all inclusive, but represent many of the investment choices and options available to you to consider. Again, you'll enter their values in total, shown in column C. Then, over in column E and F, you'll then enter the liabilities, that is, the amounts owed. And the amount owed represents, in column F, the debts in total, the total value of what is yet unpaid and uh, payable to the lender or to the creditor. Credit card debt, again, is not a monthly payment here. This is what is the total balance of what you owe on the credit card account. Any medical debts or past due utilities, personal loans with the bank or other individuals, as well as the total value of other long-term uh, liabilities like the car loan, a mortgage, student loan that are unpaid. Those total balances should be included here as well. So not a monthly payment in total. And as you see when you scroll to the bottom on row 48, 
it will then auto calculate the difference between the value of your assets, that is what you own, and what you owe liabilities. Finally, uh, in the fourth and final workshop, or worksheet rather, you will then complete your actual personal budget. Begin by the first of the month, just like the first three worksheets, worksheet one, worksheet two, and worksheet three. With worksheet four, begin with column B. Note that on row seven it says income budgeted. You are to enter for a period of one month what you believe to represent sources of your income for the upcoming month. So before the beginning of next month, that is before the first, take a look at your cash flow worksheet, that is the income earned previously, historically, make any needed adjustments based on what you know to be true in the upcoming month. If the same, then enter it as shown on your cash flow worksheet. If not, make any changes you feel are necessary and enter those in total for how much income is to be received in column B. When we get to column C at the end of the month, you'll update it again, but this time it'll be what actual income was earned at the, by the end of the month. The same can be said and applied uh, with expenses. As shown, you can uh, also at the beginning of the month enter your budget expenses in column I. This represents a forecast of the month total expenses that you likely will incur. Some of them are more readily identifiable, such as your rent, maybe any uh, payments that you have for a credit card, a car loan, or a student loan. But others may be not so easy to identify, and therefore you'll need to go through your records, your bank account balance statements and balances, and other documents to identify those expenses. Note that I have highlighted right here on row 24 the link from the first worksheet which was the financial goal that I have provided as an example it too is included in your personal budget just as you will include when you complete the first worksheet it will then auto link into this personal budget for you automatically so it will always be included in your budget and then towards the bottom again in the same column I you'll enter your variable expenses the fixed expenses are above those that do not change and those in total that do vary based on usage or need uh, are also included in variable expenses on column I for the period of one month. And again, I have added other categories as shown here on rows 54, 55, 56, and 57. At the end of the month, which uh, will occur um, in, uh, within 30 days, I'm going to ask you to go back and update this uh, very worksheet. It will be the only worksheet you'll update at the end of the month. In doing so, you will, at the end of the month, update what actual income you received. The actual income for wages, interest earned from your bank statement, perhaps any dividends or bonuses or commissions, and it will then, as you see in these orange shaded cells in columns D and E, it will then automatically calculate any variance what I ask you to do when it calculates a variance that is plus or minus 5% of the forecasted budget in column B, if there's a 5% or higher variance, jot a note, a simple note here in the yellow shaded cells of column F, and indicate as a reminder why there was a variance. Perhaps you had a great month in tips or in sales, and that of course resulted in higher commissions than what was originally planned. Consequently, if you perhaps did not work as many hours as you had anticipated, resulting in less income, that too could be explained in terms of fewer hours. All of this is important when it gets to the summary and writing your own written reflection as to what caused changes between your actual income and certainly your budgeted. Finally, you'll do the same with the expenses. At the end of the month, the end of next month, I'll ask you to go back and input the total amount of what you actually spent in each one of the categories in column J, both for fixed expenses as well as the actual spending for your variable expenses. And you can do so by keeping track through your checkbook or other means electronically to identify the actual expenses incurred. Just like with income, it will then auto-calculate the variances both in dollars as well as in percentages 
that represent differences between what was forecasted and actually spent.